All right. So sorry about that little bit of a delay. Maybe we can edit it out. Um, so here we are. We're going to be finding the nth term, which is basically finding the expression that governs this sequence of numbers, 0, 9, 20, 33, 48, 65. And uh, I'm giving you two examples because of these quadratic ones that are just a, just a bit more difficult. Um, remember, I'm trying to find the function rule or the expression that governs this or generates this sequence of numbers given terms 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, again, I can view these numbers as x and y if I'd like. Typically, we're using the n, so it matches the problems out of the book. And remember, um, I need to first determine the nature of this one. Yes, I've told you that it's already a quadratic, but let's go through the motions and make sure that it's not a linear one. Uh, because if it's linear, then it should be significantly easier for us to, uh, almost trivial, for us to determine the function rule. So 13, and what is this, 15 then? And then this is uh, 17. So I don't have a constant change at this first level, therefore the relationship is not linear. If I then discover that it is constant at the next level, since the first one was linear, this one would be quadratic. And so I am going to, and I'm trying to go very quickly, you can hit pause if you need to, or rewind. I'm going to um, factor these values. I'm going to spread them out a little bit more. 0, 9, 20, 33, 48, and 65. And the reason why I'm factoring it because this n squared uh, expression, if it's a full quadratic, probably comes from a uh, the product of two binomials. There's potential it's the product of two binomials. And if I factor these individual numbers into two values, so factoring just two, so 1 times 20, or, yeah, then that might lead me to the, the 1 being the product of this, bino this binomial here and the 20 being the product of this second binomial. So if I can find patterns within the factors of these six values, then I might be able to discover the two binomials uh, and those relationships will be linear, so I'm turning my difficult quadratic problem into two linear problems. So the zero term doesn't really help me out because zero times eight million could be an option, and so I sort of ignore that. And I go for one times nine, three times three, and of course I technically do have negative three times negative three and the negatives of one and nine, but uh, let's write that, hold it in abeyance, and see what happens. 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 3, 4 times 5. Now, if you look, I could be thinking about this 3, then a 4, and then possibly a 5, or this 3 and a 5, and possibly a 7. I could be thinking 1, 2, 9, 10, and we'll see what happens. If, I, if I'm looking at 3, 3, 4, 5, and then 5, 7, 5 times 7 is definitely not 33, so that doesn't work out. So I'm definitely not going this route. Could I go 3, 2, and then 3, 10? That would mean that this is a 1 and a 7 more, because it has to be line, linear. It's be 1 and a 17. That doesn't seem to work so well either. But what about this one? 1, 9, 2, 10. Does 3 times 11 work? Ta-da! And then 4 times 12, and then 5 times 13. So that looks like my pattern, uh, the pattern within a pattern. So I am going to now look at these sequences. If you, This one's going to be 0 times 8, by the way. If you can see it here, and that's fine, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You don't have to rewrite. I'm going to do this for clarity more so, and I'll change colors again. Um, so my first sequence of the first terms, excuse me, the first sequence of the first factors of my values would be one, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which leads me to believe that my expression that governs this sequence is n, what did I do that for? n, and I have to find the intercept. Remember, it's like n plus b in a sense. Um, but I'm going to n plus an intercept. If I go back, remember that's not the zero, that's my first term. So I have to go back to my zero term, 
Remember, it's my first term. It's my first term, right? So I have to go backwards to my zero term to find the intercept. Why? Because the y-intercept has an x value of zero. So if I go back, this would be a negative one, which leads me to a function rule of f of, uh, f of n equals n minus one. That's my first binomial. The second binomial, changing colors again, would be would comprise would be comprised of eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. That sequence looks like a slope of one as well. So that's n. I have to find the intercept. I go back one because this looks like a plus one plus one plus one plus one. Subtract one. I get n minus seven. Therefore, my function rule for this quadratic is equal to n minus one, n minus plus seven, excuse me, plus seven. If you wanna check this answer, which you should do, especially if you're taking a test or a quiz, check this number or this uh, expression by substituting values in, like the four and the five, and check to see if you get a 33 and a 48. I'm not gonna take that time because I don't want this video to be, whoa, what happened here? This video to be uh, super, super long. Okay, so let's get a new page and a new sequence. New page, pow, new sequence. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those are the first six n values. Two, five, nine, 14, 20, and 27. Okay, so again, same thought process. I want to make these into uh, expressions. I want to discover the, the or determine the expression that governs this set of values. Uh, let's see if it's linear, plus three, plus four. Doesn't look linear to me, don't have to go any further. Plus one, plus one, looks like a plus one. Okay, so it is quadratic. Copy my numbers down again, two, five, nine, 14, 20, 27. This is my first term. If I start factoring, I got one, two, and there are no other factors other for two. There are no other factors for two except for negative one and negative two. Um, five, one and five. Nine, one and nine, and three and three. But notice, for me to get some sort of pattern is this stays the same, stays the same, stays the same, because it's gone up zero and then go up three, that's not gonna work. And if this is two, five, nine, well, I, don't I have these numbers here? So that's not gonna work so much. So let's back out of here and remember what I can do to make these numbers more, quote, factorable is to actually double them. So I'm gonna multiply times two. And if you need to put a little mark there to remind you what you did, that's fine. The first term is now four, second term is 10, 18, 24, 40, and 54. Let's go ahead and factor these puppies now. One times four, two times two, two times five. Ooh, ooh, this one looks promising. Do I have three times six? Ooh, looks good. Four times seven. Oh, because I multiplied this wrong. Doofus. So that's 28. Four times seven, that works better. And then uh, five times eight, and six times nine. Well, besides that doofusy move, stop laughing at me. I know it was you, Omar, laughing at me. Okay, so here we go. There's my pattern. Here's my first one, two, three, four, five, six. It looks like that's just my term value, right? So that function rule is n. And then if I go up and change colors again, because I love to change my colors. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Give me n, subtract one to get three, n plus three. And of course, then my function rule is n times n plus three. And we do have to remember one thing. Remember when we initially multiplied our values times two, right? What happened was we took our function rule, our generated values, and we multiplied them times two. So to get the true f of n, or what we were looking for, the true function rule, I need to divide both sides by two, 
in order to actually get f of n. And so I have n times the n quantity n plus 3, all of that over 2. So that's it. Hopefully that works out, helps you out. Try to make it, what, 10 minutes, sorry.